Hey, and welcome to the Quant Guide. Today we're going to be interviewing a Quant who will be answering a technical interview question commonly asked at select high frequency trading firms. We're going to be discussing what he did well and what strategies he employed that you will eventually use to ace your interviews. While watching this interview, notice how the Quant has a very structured approach when answering this question and is able to break the question down into individual digestible components that he can solve before putting it all together to come up with a cohesive solution. Let me pass it over to the interviewer so we can get started. Let's take a look at a fun dice game. So say we have a 30-sided die and this game involves two players, A and B. A will choose their number first and then B will choose a different number. Now we're going to roll the die. Whoever chooses a number which is closer to the number that the die rolls will win the amount of money that the die rolled. Would you like to be player A or player B? Uh, okay, so just to clarify on this, uh, first the 30-sided die is just uh, enumerated from 1 through 30 and it's a uh, fair dice, right? Correct. Okay, and um, if A and B are equidistant, then I'm assuming it's a draw and everyone gets their money back, right? Yeah, that's a good clarification. Okay, um, and then let's go through an example of this. So let's say player A had chosen uh, number 8, and player B chose the number, let's say, 11. And let's say the die rolls a 5, then player A, since the player A was closer and uh, the true value was 5, then player uh, uh, then they will get $5, correct? Yeah, that's correct. So the question then is, would you rather be player A or player B? Got it. And um, is this money coming from like a third party or does player B give to player A? Yeah, the losing player will pay the other. Got it. Okay. Um, so the question is, and I'm assuming both players will be playing optimally? Yep, assume they are both playing optimally. Okay. Uh, so if we were to look at player A or player B, uh, so here the question can boil down to is, is it better for player A to choose the number first or player B choosing this number first? Uh, so to simplify this problem, let's uh, first say like we're just going from numbers 1 through 30. Um, and let's hypothetically say it's optimal to play at the number 15. <clears throat> so let's say player A chooses 15. Um, then if I was player B, uh, it would only make sense here to choose uh, like number 16 or number 14 um, because in this case I would have uh, covered most of the remaining distribution of numbers. Uh, if let's say I chose, uh, if player A chose 15 and I chose uh, let's say the number between 15 and 30, let's say uh, 22, then <clears throat> the range in which I will win is significantly smaller. So uh, just from intuition, it seems going first here would be the most optimal solution because we can cover the most uh, range on the dice. Notice that the candidate didn't even do any math to answer this question. They just based their answer on the reasoning that every number will have an expected payout associated with it. Player A gets the first pick, and so therefore will choose the number with the best payout. A lot of candidates get wound up in the technicalities of every question. Interviewers want to see you be decisive and listen to your gut. When you're on the trading floor, you're not going to have time to calculate the expected value of every decision. You're going to risk money on positions that you take on based on your gut feeling. As you work on the hundreds of practice problems, watch the mock interview series and practice talking out loud. You'll be very quick at solving these problems and you'll develop the intuition to answer the question and confidence needed to trust your gut. Okay, I see. Yeah, that makes sense. Can you tell me, say you're going first, you're player A, how will you decide what number you want to pick? Okay, so if we want to choose which uh, number, then we need to go back to the original problem about the payout strategy. Uh, so in terms of the payout, uh, they would be paid the number that the die rolls, correct? That's correct. Okay, so in this case, uh, I'm just going to go on a hypothetical scenario. Um, so if, let's say, I pick the number 10 as player A, and uh, player B will likely pick 11, uh, 
just because they will cover like the right side of the distribution and it does seem intuitively here that um, it's natural to pick 11 because you cover more numbers, you cover 20 numbers instead of just uh, 9 numbers by picking 9 instead. Say we were at 20 instead, would you say it's still natural to pick 19 instead of 21 since there are more numbers? Yeah, if assuming the payout was uh, $1 for each value, then it would definitely make sense. But uh, since the payout is based on the dice value, we would want to calculate the expected value here. Cool. So um, <clears throat> going back to just using like 10 or 11, um, I think we can first uh, gain some intuition by writing out what the expected value would be like. So player two would choose uh, to pick 11 if the expected value is greater than or equal to uh, if player A chose uh, the number 10, right? Correct. Okay, so if this scenario is true, if 10 is the optimal number, um, <clears throat> then uh, player B's intuition can be written as the expected value from um, the sum of all numbers from uh, 11 through uh, 30 uh, would be greater than or equal to the sum of the expected value of all the numbers from uh, 1 through 9. Okay, can you explain your reasoning there? Yeah, so um, if I want, so if I'm player B and I want to go in my best interest, uh, I would want to first cover all the values. So the way I got the equation was uh, uh, from 11 to 30, we're covering all the cases where we would uh, win here, right? Because the number chosen between 11 through 30 would be closer to 11 than 10. And uh, since each of these happens on a fair dice, uh, each num element has a probability of 1 over 30. Got it. Okay. So um, now let's kind of generalize this. And instead of saying we're using the number 10, uh, let's change this to the number, uh, let's change this to a random variable x. So uh, in this case, we would have, uh, we can write this as a summation format. So if I was, uh, uh, if I was player A and I chose the number X, then um, what I would want to do is uh, I want the, the expected value to be greater than um, the, like on one side over the other side. So going back to my example, I will uh, try to write this as a summation with uh, generalized terms. Okay. So uh, assuming I chose the number X, then we would get 1 over 30. Uh, and assuming here we're on the right side, so I of I is equal to XI plus 1. Uh, and this goes up to how many faces we have on the dice, which is 30. I must be greater than or equal to 1 over 30. Uh, and here we're on the other side of the chosen number, so that would be I is equal to 1 to uh, x of i minus 1, and uh, essentially we would have this very long equation here uh, expanded out and we would want to solve for what the uh, xi value would be equal to. Okay, so let's say we solve for your equation, and then I get that x sub i is less than or equal to 21.56. Now, can you tell me what you would do as player A and as player B? Yeah, so um, in this case, if uh, the, the number is 21.56, right? Yeah. So if I was player A, uh, that means I would uh, choose the number 21. And uh, if, that, if they were playing optimally, player B would subsequently choose 22. Uh, vice versa, if player A chose 22, then I think player B would choose 21. So since the number is 21.56, what tells you that you should choose 21? <clears throat> um, just because we can't uh, have, uh, we, we can't have uh, integer uh, decimals, right? Because the dice is all integer of whole numbers. 
Ah, so I mean, why would you choose twenty one over twenty two as player A? Oh, okay. I sorry, I misunderstood the question. Um, so I think it seems like twenty one and twenty two. Uh, so since the value that we're given is twenty one point five six, and we can only choose between twenty one and twenty two, we do want to plug in these numbers to see if uh which one would yield the better value. So in this case, we want to look at only player A, right? Right. So player A is going first, so they can choose any number. Okay, so uh, right now let's uh, look at the possibilities for if player A chooses uh, 21 or 22. So if player A chooses um, 21, then player B would choose 22, whereas player if player A chose 22, player B would choose 21. Uh, if we look at the first scenario we just discussed, um, substituting that back into our equation, uh, we would have 1 over 30 times the sum of 1 plus the sum of numbers to 21. And we know through arithmetic tricks, we can write the sum of 1 through 21 to just 21 times 22 over 2. Um, doing simplifications here. Uh, we get uh, 21 times 11 over 30. Um, so that here is then equal to uh, 231 over 30. Uh, divide that by 3. Uh, so that's uh, 77 over 10 or 7.7. .7. So in the first scenario, uh, based on the formula, I'm getting the payout is 7.7 .7 if we choose 21 first. Okay, so what does that 7.7 .7 represent? <clears throat> the 7.7 .7 would represent um, the uh, uh, expected value of the dice. Okay, so if I were to roll the 30-sided die, I would expect to get a 7.7. .7. Oh, sorry, sorry. That's uh, sorry. That that's the uh, payout I would get from. Sorry, the 7.7 .7 is the payout I would get uh, from choosing 21. Got it. Um, and then we would want to calculate this value for 22 as well. So to calculate this for 22, we would want to substitute that back into our equation. Um, so 1 over 30, and this time uh, we're on the other side of this inequality, which would be from 20, uh, 22 to 30. Um, so summing from 22 to 30 is the same as summing to 30 minus the 231 we previously found. So that would be uh, 30 times 31 times two to over 2 uh, minus 231. So simplifying here, we would get 234 over 30. So comparing 234 over 30 and 231 over 30, we actually get uh, slightly more in uh, choosing 22 first as uh, player A. And 234 over 30 is actually equal to 7.8. So the ideal solution here is for player A to choose uh, 22. Okay, and then if you were player B and player A was playing optimally, what would you do? Uh, in that case, I would choose 21. Just as important as it is to be able to identify the approach, you also need to be quick with doing the arithmetic and coming to an answer. If you're not able to do this arithmetic as fast as the candidate did, don't worry. We'll be covering all the methods the candidate used in the mental math module, where you will learn tricks to 10x your mental math speed. Cool, that makes sense to me. So now let's say that A and B are playing a different dice game. A is given three fair six-sided dice. B is given two fair six-sided dice. They'll both roll all of their dice. If A's greatest dice roll is greater than B's greatest dice roll, then A wins $10 from B. Otherwise, B wins $10 from A. How much should A pay to play the game? Okay, so just making sure I'm understanding the question, um, a has three six uh, fair has three uh, fair six sided die and B has two fair six sided die. Correct. That's correct. And um, we want to uh, so the payoff is based on the maximum value, right? So if player A has uh, sorry, so can you repeat the payout conditions? Sure. If A's greatest dice roll is greater than B's greatest dice roll, then A wins ten dollars from B. Okay, so um, we previously said that A is, so 
if a's max value is greater than b's max value, then uh, a would get $10 from b, right? Correct. And uh, if they are equal, then uh, b would win here, right? Correct. So a has to have a strictly greater dice roll to win. Got it. Okay, that makes sense. And uh, in that scenario, uh, we actually don't care how many dice there are, right? It seems like we're only interested in the maximum value. Yep. All that matters is the max value of their dice rolls, where A has three dice and B has two dice. Got it. Okay. So in that case, it seems like we can uh, just uh, enumerate all the possibilities. We can calculate the probability or, ex uh, sorry, we can calculate the expected value of um, P, the A winning over B, and the question is how much A should pay, uh, A should pay to play this game, right? That's correct. Okay, so um, let's uh, kind of build our intuition here. Uh, if let's say we have, um, uh, let's say we want to start with uh, just seeing if A, the probability of A uh, having a larger value than B when let's say the dice roll is equal to 1. Uh, in that case, we in the probability of having the max uh, dice roll equal to 1 for B would just be uh, 1 over 6 squared. And the reasoning for that is uh, simply both of them have to be 1, right? That's correct. And we want to look at the possibility of A being greater than B. Uh, so in this case, A of having a value of a greater than, A having a max value that is uh, greater than one. But yeah, that's, that's correct. And then, um, so in this case, this would just be one minus uh, one over six uh, squared, oh, sorry, cubed, because we have three dice. Okay, can you explain where that comes from? Uh, because for uh, person A, we have uh, three dice. So all three of them cannot be rolled to one. That's correct. Okay, um, so, that's the po so that's the case if we have i is equal to 1. Um, it seems like we can follow a pretty similar uh, pattern here up to i is equal to 6. Would, would you agree with that? Sure. So where i is b's greatest role, can you show me how the i equals 2 and i equals 3 cases look? So like, what's the probability that b's greatest role is i and that a wins in those cases? Yeah, so for i equals 2, um, we would need to calculate the probability that uh, the max value of player b is equal to 2. So in this case, uh, I would actually do something, I would, I would probably look at the probability of b is, uh, the max value of b is greater than equal to i is equal to the probability of, sorry, let me rephrase that. The probability that the max value is equal to i is equal to the probability of b is greater than or equal to i minus the probability of b equals uh, of greater than i. So we're taking the probability with the greater than equal sign minus the one with the greater sign. So just to help organize your thinking a bit, what you're thinking is finding the probability that b's role is greater than or equal to 2 minus the probability that b's roll is greater than 2 by subtracting the probability that each number is greater than 2 from the probability that each number is at least 2 you are finding the probability that the smallest number rolled is equal to 2. so you're finding the probability that b's minimum roll is 2. What you're looking for is the probability that b's maximum roll is 2. okay so uh we want to reframe the equation for finding b equals i, right? Correct. Okay, so uh, in that case, we would do p of b equals i is equal to uh, p of uh, b is less than or equal to i minus p of b is less than i. Okay, so going back to the i equals 2 situation, uh, for p of b is less than or equal to 2. Uh, the max, in this case, the max value is, uh, has to be a 1 or 2. So in this case, uh, we have uh, a few possibilities. Uh, that's just uh, 2 over 6 squared, right? Yeah, I agree. 
and then uh, if we do b uh, less than i, so the max has to be less than 2, uh, that means the only possibility we have is the previous uh, number we had, 1 over 6. So for i equals 2, our expression here would be uh, 2 over 6 squared minus 1 over 6 squared. Okay, and then uh, we want to look at the probability that A is greater than B. Uh, so in this case for, uh, so basically A has to have at least one dice that is greater than uh, two, right? Right. Okay, so I think we can follow a pretty similar uh, uh, line of thinking here. We can uh, do one minus, uh, uh, essentially we need at least one of them, so we just can't have all of them be uh, ones and twos for i equals two. So that would be two over one minus two over six cubed. Great. Let's also now do the i equals three case. So where b's greatest roll equals three. So um, i equals one, i equals two. So i equals 1 was 1 6 squared, uh, 1 minus 1 over 6 cubed, uh, 2 over 6 squared, uh, yeah, minus 1 over 6 squared, and minus 2 over 6 cubed. So for i equals 3, um, going back to the expression that we had, um, so for p of b is less than or equal to i minus p of b less than i, uh, so for the max to be less than 3, uh, we would have uh, 3 over 6 uh, q squared, right? And uh, we want to minus uh, the probability that the max that the max of b is less than 3. So for that, we would just take uh, 2 over 6 squared. And uh, on the other side of p is the probability of p being of a greater than b, uh, we would want uh, having so basically the max has that has to be four or higher. So we would get one minus three over six cubed. And then uh, okay, I think I see the pattern here. Uh, so if we were to extend this for like i equals four. Uh, it would be 4 over 6 squared minus uh, 3 over 6 squared, uh, 1 minus 4 over 6 cubed. Uh, and then we would go to i equals 6, which would be just uh, uh, 6, uh, 1 squared minus uh, 5 over 6 squared. And then the last one would be 0. Uh, and then since we're calculating the expected value and enumerating through all these possibilities, we would uh, take our uh, goes for i equals 1, we would multiply those two probabilities together and then sum. So we would take the product of the values in each row and then, sorry, in each column and then sum them through each row, if that makes sense. Can you just walk me through what your rows and columns look like? Yeah, so my rows are the possible dice outcomes. So if we want to consider the maximum value uh, of the dice being one, two, three, four, five, or six. Uh, so there's six rows there. And then the two columns I'm considering are um, the probability that B, the max value that B has is uh, equal to the dice value or I. And the other column is if A is greater than that value. Sweet. So then you said your final answer will be the product of both of those columns. Yeah, so that's the expected value, and um, since we asked originally the payout was $10, we multiply by 10. Great, thank you. This question covers a few fundamental probability concepts. We covered all of these, and many more, in the theory part of the probability module. So watch those videos again and do the practice problems if things don't make sense. Let's look at what the candidate is doing and really unpack the intuition behind it. The candidate uses casework here because there are only six possible outcomes for B's largest role, so it's not too hard to enumerate all of them. For each case, we need the probability that the case occurs, which is probability that B is equal to I. 
And then, given that the case occurred, we need to find the probability that A wins, which is probability that A is greater than I. As we've covered, probability that A is greater than 3, for example, is the same as the complement of the probability that A is less than or equal to 3. Finding probability that A is less than or equal to 3 is easy. That's just 3 over 6 cubed. Therefore, probability that A is greater than 3 equals 1 minus this quantity, or 1 minus 3 over 6 cubed. Now, how do we come up with probability that B equals I? This is saying, if we roll two dice, what's the probability that the highest number on any of the two dice is I? Let's find probability that B equals 2. The die rolls can only be 1s or 2s, but at least one of the two rolls needs to be a 2. As we learned earlier, we can use complementary counting to answer this. Let's find the probability that both dice are 1s or 2s, and then subtract the probability that both dice show a 1. That will leave us with the probability that at least one of the dice shows a 2. Well, first of all, what's the probability that both dice show a 1? 1 over 6 squared. Now, what's the probability that both the dice are 1s or 2s? 2 over 6 squared. This second value includes the case where both dice show just a 1. Therefore, let's just get rid of the probability that both dice just show a 1. And this ensures that at least one of the two dice shows a 2. Therefore, we get 2 over 6 squared minus 1 over 6 squared. Bam! That's the probability b equals 2. With this in mind, if you weren't able to solve the problem the first time, try it again now. In order to ace the betting game and strategy interview questions, you need to develop a fundamental understanding of probability. Once you go through all of the probability theory videos, their associated practice questions, the probability mocks, and the actual probability interview questions that appear in interviews, you'll have a very strong understanding of probability and counting, which will directly translate to being able to answer betting game questions. As you complete the betting games and strategy module and do the associated practice questions, you'll be an expert at noticing patterns and knowing when to apply what concepts. These questions will then seem like a breeze.